Good evening and salutations, my YNR fans. So, Mariah and Sharon. First of all, I've never really had much of a use for Mariah and Tess because every time that they give them scenes, they generally tend to go nowhere. Even when they have their own, like, story, it feels like it's so half-assed done. But with that being said, when she's attached to, like, Sharon's story right now, she's really pretty interesting. Um, you know, she's willing to sit there and have her mom yell at her and everything like that just to get out the um, the pent-up stress and the anger and everything like that. And, you know, it's just... It seems like they give them more interesting things when they're separate than they do when they're together. Now, one of the things that I, I really appreciate about this scene is when Mariah comes in and she's like, who are you talking to? And, you know, she, she's seeing her mom and everything like that. She's trying to help her out. And she's like, you know, I get it. You know, you're going through a lot. And, you know, seeing Faith in the hospital, it must be really bringing up a lot of painful memories about Cassie. And Sharon snaps at her and pretty much is just like, you know, I wouldn't be thinking about those memories so much if people didn't sit there and keep bringing them up, you know, especially, you know, in a time like this. And I appreciate that scene because... I'm pretty sure anyone that has actually been through something similar, somebody being in a hospital or whatever, and they're going through stuff, when somebody reminds them of of something that happened in their past before or whatever, it, although they're trying to help, sometimes in that moment, it actually winds up doing more harm than good. Now, after that, um... I don't know what, what Cameron Kirk is actually doing. Like, what is... Like, all he says is that he's not there trying to feed her anger because Sharon... Well, let's just be honest. She is pissed at Lucy. She blames Lucy for all of this. She blames Daniel for this. And by the way, Heather, for somebody who's a lawyer, I don't understand why she can't simply read the room. And what I mean by that is... So, there's a point after, you know, Sharon goes to the hospital and, and sees Daniel and Lucy and Heather, and she starts to get really weak and stuff, and um, there's a little bit after Mariah comes in, and Nick comes in, and eventually Heather comes in, and they're all talking, and at some point, it's just Heather and Sharon. Now, Sharon is giving this woman, like, the most death glare you can possibly give somebody. And Heather, for somebody who's a lawyer whose job is to kind of read the room and this, that, and third, just comes across as totally clueless. She's just talking and talking and talking. And like, well, you know, I hope the girls can heal and this, that, and third. And I'm like, do you not see the look on this woman's face? Like, I, I don't get that. Plus, there's a point, and I know I'm kind of going over a little bit, but there's a point where she's talking to Daniel, and Daniel is, you know, at first he was sitting there saying, you know, Sharon, you know, she's still probably pretty pissed off at me and stuff like that, and she probably blames me for this whole thing, and, you know, he blames himself, and she's like, you know, you got to stop doing that, and Daniel's like, okay, but let's just sit there and say we know each other, and I was the cause of your daughter's death or whatever, would you be able to forgive me? And she's like, I don't know, I'm like, you know. And even if you're like, you don't know, you can understand where Sharon's coming from. So you can understand why he can't just sit there and lay himself off the hook or find peace, as she says, as easily as her trying to coax him into doing. Lucy, see, the, I know that I'm supposed to feel bad for her when she wakes up she's crying and she's worried about Faith and, you know, she's blaming herself and stuff like that. But I'm just... I, I can't do it. Like, I, I don't know if it's just because she's just an annoying character, but I'm like, you kind of need to feel that. You need to feel that. You need to be crying. I can't feel bad for you. You need to go through that because it could have ended a lot worse because of what you did. 
So it's, it's very hard for me to have, I mean, you know, granted, if she would have died, it would have been different, but it's hard for me to have sympathy when she chose to do what she did. And, you know, I, I know people get sit there and say, well, you know, she was just a kid and da, 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 da. I don't care. Your actions caused a de- could have caused the death of yourself, Faith, or the other person that was on the road. So I, I, I don't have the sympathy in me. Now, Phyllis is not there talking to Nick. And, you know, she's worried about Nick. She's like, you know, I'm here for you and stuff like that. There's a point where Nick isn't there saying, well, if Lucy has stayed home and listened to her parents and listened to Faith, this wouldn't want to happen. And Phyllis is like, so are you blaming, he's like, are you blaming Daniel for this? I was like, no, he's blaming Lucy for this. But then there's a point where he's like, I'm not blaming Daniel, I'm not blaming Lucy, this was an accident. I was like, well, you, in the previous scene, you you literally did just that. Now, you know, Phyllis is like, you know, okay, good, you know, it's not her fault or whatever. I was like, well, no, let's not fully rule that out. Um, asking about Sharon, he gets super defensive. And, you know, in all reality, she really was just coming across as more concerned. Knowing that she was off and she was already on the edge before. She's a lot worse now. And pretty much telling Nick, hey, listen, this is not something you could just fix like that. Like, you may not be able to fix. You can't fix her. This is something that she needs medication and a therapist for. He gets kind of defensive for whatever. He winds up leaving. Um, Summer and Claire actually had a nice talk. And you know what I've realized about this scene? Although I haven't liked the way that she treated Claire, um, and I thought she was going to get all upset because, you know, Claire was just saying, hey, you know, I'm changing my last name to um, Newman and everything. On some level, I understand where she's coming from. When she found out that Claire nearly murdered her entire family, I got the level of hate towards her. I I understood that. Especially watching Harrison... I got that as well. There were times where she, I'm going to be honest, came across kind of as a bitch. But at the same time, you know, maybe because I'm, I'm not going to lie, I kind of did this again. I can see where she's coming from. But, you know, she she finds out that Claire's in the there, have another job offer, and she's like, you know, I, I, I don't want you to take it. But she's like, I don't want you to take it because I don't want you to, because Claire was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about that on the job and I'm pretty sure you'll be happy with it, you know, if, if I decide to not be a nanny anymore. She doesn't want her to do it because of her. You know, she doesn't want her to sit there and, and go to another job simply because it's her, you know, because Summer doesn't like her or she doesn't want her as a nanny. And I'm kind of just like, you know, you could just sit there and say that she's actually a good nanny. Um, Harrison really likes her, trusts her and everything like that constantly talks about her and it's like you couldn't give her that level of credit so i'm not gonna lie part of me was gonna come into this review in a entirely different kind of energy but then i sat there and i was like yeah i can kind of see where she's coming from um and so, and then claire was not there talking about because you know she researched everyone she was like she wanted to be like summer the most and i was like I should have set your sights a little bit higher, but, um, okay. So for the most part, they seem like they actually had a good talk. Summer goes to Phyllis. They talk about Faith. They talk about Nick and how worried, you know, she is for, for Nick and stuff like that. Cause you know, Nick is the type of person that, that, that will take care of everyone else and neglect his own needs. Um, He's just, he's just that type of, he's just that type of guy. And I'm not just saying that he's perfect. I don't know all the crap that he's done before, but that's just his, his general nature is that he's a caretaker. Um, even at the detriment of himself. Um, what else went up happening in this episode? And I think I also said, 
why I didn't. But in the beginning, he was Cynthia blaming himself. He was blaming him and Heather kind of for not keeping a closer eye on Lucy. And I'm like, I get it in the moment. This has happened. So, but, you know, Heather has to sit there and, and be the rational one and be like, listen, we can't watch our daughter 24-7. Those things are going to happen. It is what it is. We just got to sit there and, and show her tough love. Um, and then you're trying to make it seem like, so you're just exhausting yourself of, of law, the blame and responsibility. It's like, no, we're, I'm just being realistic. So I don't understand how she was smart in one scene and not being like, not self-aware or unself-aware and not sitting there reading the situation where this woman looks like she is ready to grab the sharpest object and just, you know, go ape shit on you pretty much. Um, I didn't really get that. Now, one thing I was at the say before I go, I saw the previews and I'm just like, Lily, you know, you hit rock bottom. You are asking Victor Newman for help. That is all I'm going to say. Anyway, I feel like there might be more, but um, I can't think of it right now. So, come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll talk about all the shows, General Hospital, Days of My Lives. General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, Born and Beautiful and Young and Restless. And with that being said, I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next video.